Vanguard's founder, Jack Bogle, launched the first index fund tracking the S&P 500 in 1976, and a famous quote of his that I love is, don't look for the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. Now, the S&P 500 is regarded as the best single gauge of large cap U.S. equities that includes 500 leading companies and covers approximately 80% of the available market cap in the U.S., which historically has seen strong growth for investors. In fact, since 1980, it's reported to have grown on average 11.93% percent per year, which would have turned $1,000 into roughly $150,000. And if we adjust that for inflation, it's still a solid 8.61% per year. All in all, the S&P 500 is among the best index fund to track the growth of the U.S. economy, which is why it's referred to as the benchmark for the U.S. stock market. And just so you know, the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index, which means the companies that are inside of this fund are going to be given weight based off of their size. For example, as of the recording of this video, Apple has the largest influence by covering roughly 7% of the entire fund. So if you only bought the S&P 500, then 7% of your investment would be in Apple. So knowing that, out of all the options out there, let's first go over the best S&P 500 ETFs. For those curious, there are two ways you can purchase an index like the S&P 500. The first is through an ETF, and the second is through a mutual fund. I'll go over the best options for both types in this video, but to simply break it down for you, ETFs allow you to trade anytime throughout the day, similar to stocks. You can buy them on nearly any platform, and they are known to be more tax efficient. Where mutual funds, on the other hand, the trades only go through at the end of the market day, you can only buy them on the same platform unless you pay an unnecessary fee, and then they're considered to be less tax efficient. Just the note to add on here is say you have a Fidelity brokerage account, but you want a Vanguard ETF, you can easily do that. Or even if you have a Roth IRA, you can use any ETFs that you'd like. So before I dive deep into the data, also understand that if you see the name S&P 500 in an investment, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is tracking the true S&P 500 index. For example, the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 Value ETF, ticker SPYV, this fund tracks the S&P 500 value index that offers exposure to S&P 500 companies that are considered undervalued. And because of that, the performance is going to be different and the historical returns, as you can see, are much lower than the traditional S&P 500 index. Or you may find yourself looking at an S&P 500 equal weighted ETF where it contains the same companies from the S&P 500, but instead gives each company the same weight in the fund. So this approach would result in more exposure for the smaller companies in the S&P 500, where the historical performance is also worse than the actual S&P 500 index. So knowing that, let's go over the first S&P 500 index fund to know about, that is the Spider S&P 500 ETF with the ticker SPY. Now the interesting thing about SPY is that it is the world's most traded ETF, trading roughly $38 billion a day on average, giving investors the ability to tap extreme liquidity. The fact that SPY has $551 billion in assets under management, but an average trading volume of 52 million over the past 40 days with a bid at ask spread of 0%. So if you're one looking to actively trade or use option strategies with the S&P 500, you can't get any better than this. But besides that, SPY is currently trading at $561 and has the highest expense ratio of all the options in this video at 0.0945%. The expense ratio is simply how much it costs to own the fund per year, and it's going to be automatically distributed throughout the time of owning the fund. You don't have to pay anything separately. And the difference here is that let's say you started with $1,000 and invest $500 every month into the S&P 500, getting a 10% annual return at a 0.1% expense ratio. And let's say you hold this for 30 years. After that time, you would have ended up with a $985,000 portfolio but paying close to $19,000 in fees. Where if you instead invested into an actively managed fund with a 0.75% expense ratio, your end portfolio would be $871,000 because you would now have paid a total of $133,000 in fees. The reason I'm mentioning all this is because if you are planning to buy and hold the S&P 500 for a long time, there are much better alternatives that are gonna be cheaper and in the long run, make you more money. For example, the next option I'm about to show you has a 0.02% expense ratio Ratio, which after 30 years, that means you would hit exactly $1 million with a total amount of fees being under $4,000 when compared to SPY, that would be $19,000. So the difference of $15,000 just from a click of a button, to me, makes it well worth it if you are investing for the long term. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor and you have to do your own research to make your own decisions, but to learn even more ways to make even more money, just the simple click on the subscribe button could be well worth it. So with SPY, the fund has a dividend yield of 1.18%, with the returns over the past year being 26.94%, the average annual return over the past 
past five years was 15.77%, and over the past 10 years, that average was 12.83%, where this fund was officially created in January 1993. Which, by the way, all the returns that you're going to be seeing include the expense ratio factored into it. With that said, moving on to the next ETF is going to be the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 ETF, but now the ticker SPLG. If you didn't notice, this is another S&P 500 ETF through the exact same company, but as I've mentioned in some of my previous content, the difference here is the exact same as QQQ versus QQQM. You see, these two both track the NASDAQ 100, but QQQ has a much higher liquidity, making it more ideal for those active traders, where QQQM has a lower expense ratio, making it more ideal for long-term buy and hold investors. So this same concept now applies to SPY and SPLG, where with SPLG, the assets under management are at $45 billion, but more so the average trading volume is much lower, where over the past 50 days, the average is 6.5 million where the bid ask spread is 0.02%. Other than the difference maker here for those that are long term investing is that the expense ratio with this fund is going to be at 0.02%. From there, SPLG currently trades at $66 per share, has a dividend yield of 1.26%. Over the past year, it performed better than SPY as it grew 27.07%. Over the past five years, on average, it grew 15.88%. And over the past 10 years, the average was 12.86%. And this fund was officially created in November 2005. You see, because the expense is lower for this fund than SPY, over time, that will impact the returns that you're going to be getting if you're just holding on to the fund. With that said, the next fund on my list is the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, ticker IVV. Now, IVV is currently trading at $564. That comes with an expense ratio of 0.03%. The total assets under management is 519 billion, with an average volume over the past 50 days being 4 million. The bid ask spread is 0.01%, with a dividend yield of 1.24%. And over the past year, this fund grew 24.62%. The average over the past five years was 15.04%. And over the past 10, that average is 12.83%. Knowing that, moving on to the last S&P 500 ETF, this one is a very popular one, and that is through Vanguard with their S&P 500 ETF, ticker VOO. So this fund is currently trading at $515 per share. It has an expense ratio of 0.03%, with its net assets being one2 trillion dollars the average volume over the past 50 days is 4.7 million with the bid ask spread being 0.01% and a dividend yield of 1.26%. If we look at the fund over the past year, it grew 27%. The average over the past five was 15.88%. And over the past 10 years, it was 12.94%, which is slightly higher than the other ETFs. So that covers the best S&P 500 ETFs. To break it down, if you are one looking to actively trade the S&P 500, I would recommend going with SPY, and then if you're one looking for long-term investing, to go with one of the other options, and then whichever one you pick, I would just recommend to stick with that one because they all track the same index and the results are going to be very similar. But if you are curious, the one that I personally use is Vanguard's VOO. So that covers the ETFs. Let's now transition into the best S&P 500 mutual funds. Leading off from the Vanguard ETF VOO, the mutual fund version is pretty much the exact same investment, and that's going to be through the ticker VFIAX. The biggest difference here is that you're going to need to be trading on Vanguard unless you want to pay an unnecessary fee like $100 on Fidelity to get it there, but with VFIAX, they require a $3,000 minimum investment. But with VFIAX, the fund has a 0.04% expense ratio, with its net assets being $1.2 trillion, where the dividend yield for this fund is 1.32%, where over the past year, the fund has grown at 27.08%. The average over the past five was 15.87%, and over the past 10 years, that number is 12.94%, which the fund was created in November. 2000. Besides Vanguard, the one that I currently use that many know about from following my content is through Fidelity, which is the ticker FXAIX. Although they do have another option with zero fees that I'll cover on shortly, this fund has been my favorite that I've stuck with for a while now that comes at a 0.015% expense ratio. The fund has $585 billion in assets under management with a dividend yield of 1.25%. 
and over the past year, it grew 27.12%, where the average over the past five was 15.9%, and over the past 10 years, that was 12.97%, where this fund's been around the longest of all the ones in this video, as it started in February 1988. But like I said, a more recent one through Fidelity that has zero fees is the Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. You see, Fidelity created their own in-house index, where this one's called the Fidelity US Large Cap Index, where they incentivize this zero fee mutual fund to try to get people in the door to then use other products and services that they offer. I like to think of this potential loss leader similar to Costco's rotisserie chicken that they've kept at $4.99 for more than two decades to get people in the doors and spend money on other things. So this fund has the ticker of FNILX. There is a 0% expense ratio, currently $10 billion in assets under management, which is the lowest of all of them. And so to compare the fundamentals here with Fidelity's other S&P 500 mutual fund, you can see FXAIX is on the left, where the top sector includes Infotech at 30.99%, compared to the true S&P 500 index at 31.05%, then others like financials at 13.29, and healthcare at 12.16%. But now on the right, you can see the comparison with FNILX that has a 31.41% weight toward Infotech, financials at 13.37, and healthcare at 12.05%. So they're all very close, but not exact. Knowing that with FNILX, over the past year, the fund grew 27.45%, and the average over the past five years was 15.93%, where the fund has only been around since 2018, so there's not enough data to go further back. With that said, the last S&P 500 index mutual fund that I'm about to show you is through Charles Schwab, that is SWPPX. This fund has $101 billion in assets under management, a 0.02% expense ratio, it pays dividends yearly at a 1.25% dividend yield, and over the past year, this fund grew 27.09%, the average over the past five years was 15.89%, and over the past 10 years, it grew 12.93%, which the fund was a Officially created in May 1997. If you want my personal take, I have a Roth IRA with Fidelity where I use FXAIX, and then for any other accounts, I like to use BOO. This is what I've decided on and what I've stuck with, and whatever you decide, I'd recommend to just stick with it. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor and you have to make your own decisions, but I will leave the spreadsheet I created on all the statistics, so if you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description below for you. And I will say, if you are interested to see how I allocate my investments and see other exclusive content, consider joining the Patreon that I'll have linked in the description below. Which I will say, if you want to start investing on a new platform, you can get over $60 worth of free stock with Weeble when you make your first deposit over $500 using the link I have in the description below. And as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button for future content like this.